almost starting to plug in these modules and I got um, actually uh, some 1 gigabit standard hard shape 45 plus fiber optics. And I have the pack. I'm going to connect in one patch cable. Let's see if it works. I can't see if they're recognized here. But I'll look at the console and get in here. I know these are a bit too long, but I thought better long than too short. They're three meters. <laughs> protections up. Hmm. Yeah, more lights up.
And now, of course, these aren't configured. And those aren't configured either. So, this one. Now, actually, there's nothing that's configured. So, we actually have to go and tell this device what those are in terms of output. But not, not the. I don't. Yeah. When I was looking at the management console, it doesn't seem you can define what type of a SFP module it is from a physical perspective. You can only say what kind of a port is this from the fabrics perspective. Is it like a port to a server or is it an uplink or... I can't remember all the ones that were there. But, um, so oh, anyway, we'll see. So we got this now set up. And I don't know if this Linux box is going to wake up automatically. It might, might actually need to be rebooted. Anyway, let's go see. Yeah, I played around port two and I got it to say that it's enabled. So I don't even act, actually recognize in what um, module and it's actually a 10 gigabit license is okay. to get into the configuration information again. So I just did a, yeah, threw it together. I don't know what, what I'm doing really, but we'll see. You can always come back and adjust it later. So I'm just gonna throw in a default configuration for the rest of the stuff that I put in. Oh, well, all the noise, hey, I rebooted the user the server, and now I was a green light. I don't know what that means, but green. And I also rebooted the um, fabric switch. Let's see what happens. Well, 100% confident it's okay. We'll see. Ah, nothing's really working. So anyway, whatever. I've got like uh, three different SFP modules from basically three different manufacturers. One of them is for. Um, fiber and the other two are just ethernet one gig and um, none of them are really working so if you look at the port level then basically I'm just getting this um, SFP validation failed or hardware or something equivalent and I've been spending a lot of time trying to find a solution for this and, yeah uh, everything in that I've tried has kind of failed. So anyway, I think I've tried and tried and tried and um, I've come to the conclusion that um, because this is such an old piece of enterprise equipment that it's actually very, it's a bit sensitive to what SFP modules can use. So I think that this is actually over generation where uh, Cisco would only work mainly with Cisco branded uh, SFP modules. So I'm, I'm going to go and um, buy some uh, Cisco SFP modules for uh, nearly the same configuration. I actually don't need so many Ethernet 1D ports, I only need two. So. Well, actually, I don't need any, but <laughs> I'm going to buy two. And then there will be the same three um, ports for the fiber optics. Because, um, yeah, I mean, it was a bit stupid for my part that I didn't buy them right away because um, the SFP mod Cisco SFP modules, the ones that are compatible with this unit, they're not that expensive. I mean, they're pretty much the same that I paid for these. Maybe I got these a little bit cheaper. Anyway, yeah, it's an uh, interesting test to, to, to uh, yeah, that's my latest theory is that it's, um, 
it's to do with the ground, with the grounding and the age of this equipment. It's, it's, it's checking the SFP module and then it's, uh, it can't validate it or it says hardware because it's, um, it, it thinks it's not compatible. With the so anyway, a magical blue video will be immediate, but for me it'll be um, yeah, a couple of weeks at least before I come here. But anyway, now I'm going to shut this down and I'm going to tear out all these yeah, weights from the thing. Oh, anyway. It's all wasted cash. <laughs> it turns out the Cisco model is actually work. But I can't, I, I'm gonna... Yeah, I mean the likelihood that I won't need more modules and the likelihood that they, these modules won't work in any other piece of equipment. Is, I think that's kind of unlikely so over time I think I'll probably be able to plug them in some one or another project. But anyway we will see what happens when I get the Cisco modules. Just a few words about administration. So um I switched the mode to um well, the Ethernet mode to switch. And, and since I don't have any fiber channel it doesn't really matter what that is. You can see here it's the grade options that are in use. And the other thing is that it's still displaying faults. Um, let's have a look at one and I'll discuss it. I mean, in this configuration, there's um, and the switch is empty. There's, there's absolutely nothing in it. And, um, and then you get this like hardware fault from from and uh, and the port is even disabled. So I don't know uh, where that comes from. And then here you see the details, so it's port failed. And um, then if we go into the details of the of the um, fault, then you see that it's it's already been acknowledged and it doesn't disappear. And it's happened. Yeah, some time ago. So this is history. And uh, according to all the, yeah, lots of different online posts and stuff, I found that it's actually, it seems to be pretty hard to get rid of these, um, these um, fault messages. Um, so there's no, there doesn't seem to be any global function to, to delete them. So, um, yeah, so even if it isn't an active fault, and really if it's saying a hardware fault, then we'll permanently on a port and the port hasn't got anything plugged in and it's, and it's disabled that feels really weird and and seeing how randomly distributed pseudo randomly distributed those faulty ports are I'd, hard to believe that my even if this is a used unit that it's actually the case that it's that mix of ports that are failing so yeah Yeah, we'll see what happens when I plug in an original native Cisco SFP module and see if it um, actually can wake up one of those ports that are airing out. So, um, sorry for the noise around here. For all the equipment running, it's going to be more noisy when I start this one. But anyway, now we have um, <laughs> theoretically Cisco original fiber optic module SFP modules and then we're just going to try them with the, these in the network parts on the server. So the first task is to connect the server to the um, fabric interconnect and see that or put this in the fabric interconnect and see that it if it accepts it and then connect these two together from the server to the fabric interconnect and see if we get any green lights. Um, so we'll use this interconnect cable just the patch fiber patch cable to do that so let's have a look well that looks like oh, I see the new rack fully activated for the first time if you want to see the building video build video for the rack then I probably already posted it by the time this goes up and um, sorry for the sniffing also I caught caught a cold I really would like to see if this works. So this is the Cisco Fabric Interconnect. 
and this is the a Windows server and then there's a Ubuntu server. So let's try try the Windows one and see what happens. Now this is not configured, so we have to look at the software and uh, configure it, so I, I don't know if it will stop blinking just because it's plugged in, but um, I'm just going to give it a try. This goes in the other way, like down instead of up, like huh? on the server. So. As I said, this is not configured yet. It might be that we'll get no green lights. for outside use, but let's put this to the side for now. Check that later, and now we're going to use the patch cable. coming from the one gigabit line into here and then I'm going to go to the fab interconnect with one fiber module. Now 
no idea if this is going to work. Cisco module for the fly green to the right. a little while for it to power up and as I said the fabric interconnect is not configured for the modules the module ports in use and I don't think there's any automatic mechanism that makes it start up so I, so we're gonna have to visit the software and configure it so anyway I'll wait until this one this box starts and then we'll go and have a look at the configuration now this has started but no sign of traffic which is not a, unexpected since the fabric interconnect is not configured so let's go have a look at the software okay a little bit of a full bar so anyway um, <laughs> I don't know how this mistake happened but um, I have um, multi-mode um, transceivers and um, the patch cables I ordered and I did it myself are for single mode so I don't have no idea why I did this but that's just what I did um, so actually these here require the multi-mode patch cables and, uh, and as you see that they're also nicely color coded so I actually can't explain why I purchased these but anyway, now I have the correct patch cables, so I'm just going to change out uh, the ones that I installed and then um, see if we get some blinky blinky. Anyway, now I'm going to try and connect this one to the Cisco switch and um, I'm going to simulate the connection, so I'm going to use a single mode patch cable. Now the first attempt will be using um, 
Cisco single model down fiber models and ah, will they work with this? I'm a little bit skeptical, but ah, let's give it a try. So I'll just get this wired in. Sometimes I'm tricky to get started. So, that's done. This is going. Get everything powered off. I won't film it because it takes quite a while. Back when that's done. Ah, powering up. That does come up and run. It'll take a while. And um, this hasn't been configured yet, so I have to go to the computer to um, configure that. Just notice when booting this thing that it. I haven't measured the times, but the feeling is that sometimes um, it takes longer to boot from cold start, and then other times it goes much faster. I don't know what drives that. Oh, anyway, that's um, looking quite good, actually. But, um... I did do a small change. And these are always blinking hardware failure, even when I configured this. So, um, what I did is I took a slot that I knew, knew was working and it's not in use. So I swapped out the module. So I moved it from here to here. And um, then it just became active. Now you see we have it's active and there's traffic. Yeah. Then I moved this um, cable, so this comes from the, um, the switch where I have the Ethernet coming from the house, so it goes into here as a test. And then this is feeding the Cisco. And then from the Cisco it goes into the server. And we seem to have um, a connection. So that's actually quite nice. So I just need to get the fiber modules sorted out for the servers, and the new fiber modules are, are on the way. So we'll see if they um, 
if they activate um, on the HP cards. So now we know we have a patch cable connection that works. So now I'm going to unpackage the uh, armored um, fiber optic cable and we'll connect that in and see if it works. Oh, that's nice. So now the long distance fiber optic cable is connected. And we have a link and we have traffic. So that's that's encouraging. Okay, next SFP module set to test. And um, these ones are um, SFP fiber optic multi-mode HP modules. So these these are the ones that should work with the network cards I've installed so on the servers. So um, let's get them swapped out and see what happens. So let's see. Now this server's not on, that one's on. I don't expect that to get up. And um, the Cisco switch is not on either. So I'm going to swap these out first and then boot up the Cisco switch. Really regretting I put that network card on the top step. So. It makes this very good. Okay. Yeah, I'm right. uh, booting the system screen takes forever. <laughs> I haven't been keeping it running actually, I've been scaling back on it due to the energy crisis, so I've only run the full side of it on the weekend, so late at night, and only for some hours. Hopefully this situation will clear itself. Get back to normal. So I was slightly stuck with the Windows server. <laughs> I forgot to install the, um, or somehow, I thought that this was the adapter I installed, but that's incorrect, it actually, it's this one of course, and, uh, you had to manually install the drivers for that, for the card, and I actually got the card working, but actually I noticed, I actually do already have a 10 gig capable um, onboard mic, with SFP on this server, so I could have could have used that, but now I actually moved to using this one so that actually works. Anyway, continue. I'm, I'm actually having um, very bit, little success with multi-mode fiber. 
either on the module level, SFP module level or, or yeah. And um, I even followed the instructions, so I should have the correct SFP module for um, the Cisco unit, and that seems to be accepted. And then the correct SFP module for the HP cards I have. But I, I can't get the link to activate. So, but um, I did use the um, single mode. I had one pair for single mode connection for the long fiber optic connection. So I took those modules. And those I can get working just plug and play, even if theoretically this card doesn't support that module. But um, I can just plug it in and it activates immediately. And um, yeah, it's a Cisco module, so the Cisco unit accepts it. So I've actually been able to now connect in the Windows Server through single mode fiber. But the problem is I don't have any more of these modules. I have to order more. If I'm going to switch out from multi-mode to single mode, then I will have to use the yeah, speed of the, the <laughs> speed of filling into order and swap out all the multi-mode modules that I have. Because I, I just can't seem to get them to work. The single mode um, SFP plus modules seem to they seem to be very compatible. They seem to yeah, at least with my configuration, they they work on this one. They work on the um, Aruba switch. So yeah, so I might actually go down that route. Anyway, now my next task is to check, swap out. I uh, use the only. I'm going to move. Um, the single mode module from the Windows server to the Unix or the Linux server. See if that activates. Because then I confirm that I can interconnect the long distance cable uh, and then the servers with single mode. And then I'll just have to bite the bullet and buy more single mode modules. That seem, that seem to work, even if, yeah, I don't really see why the multi-mode, I mean, this should, this is a multi-mode patch cable, so, so, I don't know, it just doesn't activate, or it's not, it's not, either not recognized by, you know, one of these equipment, or, uh, it's recognized, but then you don't get a link, or traffic, and that's not the case with the single mode. The single mode seems to work pretty cool, so. so anyway, I'm next server next. So anyway, I got the rest of the single mode modules that seem to be working, so I'm going to plug these in. And we're even going to try and um, connect in the Linux server and see if it creates a link, but I'm actually not optimistic about the Linux server. I think it's probably this um, the network card that I currently have in it is. I mean the it, it, it's the hardware is okay. The drivers load. Um, it's just that it it won't create a link with whatever module combination I throw at it. So and um, I can't find any any usable information online related the the only most suggestions are is to chuck the card and go for another one so another type of card so uh, that'll probably be in, it'll be in another video if we have to do that so but anyway let's get this stuff connected and see if we can um, get a link okay. let's see if we can get started Cables. I haven't had much luck with multi mode.
And this is uh, off, and uh, also the server is off. So Bring them up after I've got this stuff. This out already. Yes, I did. That's not. So it's the last chance for the. No, uh, it's machine. I mean, uh, with that network. Uh, I'm just going to give it one more try with this. So I put them on. So I'm not expecting the 
you can just sort of wake up. Don't leave me alone. Let's give it a try. Let's get done. And this one boot it up. And then do the preserver. And then I'll come back when it's done because it takes, as you've seen, it takes a long time for these to boot. So, so I'll just come back with a summary of how it went. Yeah, my little graveyard of. SP, SFP money. I mean, they're not dead. They, they just um, in the configuration I'm trying to build. I couldn't get them to work either because the module pair weren't compatible with each side. The devices I was trying to connect, or they just didn't create a link. Um, and um, yeah, this is multi-mode, so. Single mode I got to work most of them. So anyway, it teaches that one should actually buy a pair first, test it, and then buy the, the rest of them. But you use a pair, buy a pair that one thinks is going to work, and then um, install it in all link combinations where one wants to use it and see that it actually works, and then decide how many to buy after that. So not do like I did to um, pre pre-purchase enough for all the links and then find out afterwards so they actually don't work. So I was a little bit too over optimistic about the compatibility of, of, of SFP module technology and obviously it's um ah it, it's not as compatible as one would like to think and uh, sadly even looking up the type numbers for the SFP module like we have now shown in my configuration doesn't seem to be the the yeah, absolute answer either, which is kind of strange. Yeah, I have nothing to do with either. Now, I'm not just that stuff. 